Hello everyone, this is Anne from Odulcina Scrap. I am back today with the tutorial video on how to create that squarish junk journal that I started making by pure coincidence. And I love that format. We kind of want something new from time to time, right? So I'm going to use my one of the two latest kits that I've been created, which is this one, the Lace Love digital kit, which is kind of just background pages, and the Blessed Talent, which are little musicians, little boys, little girls, and some background papers, neutral, and the music sheets. And this one, the last one, it's the, um, the same paper, but printed on a coffee stain paper. All right, so all of those kits, you, you should always look at them as... If you print them on a coffee stained paper, you're gonna have a more vintagey look than just printing on paper. And this is what I did. Plus you get the noise kind of, so I love to use that. And to create my cover, I'm gonna glue two pages together. So one that is coffee stained, and obviously it's not the same brand of paper, so there's a little difference. Anyway, I'm gonna trim it. So first I fold into two and I trim for making a square out of it. And then I'm, I've trimmed the side to remove the white. Then I sewn it with my sewing machine two times all around it, inking it. And this is the base of my junk journal. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the inside pages and I'll just take some coffee stain paper and I'll tear them to be the proper size. I've used five papers, so five papers folded into two that creates 10 pages and then you have both sides of a page. So it's a 20 pages that you can add uh, decals or journaling spots. So you can put more or less, it's up to you. You can add in between pages that are smaller. And for the sewing of the signature, I just used my sewing machine and I did a straight line, but it could be the typical treading for a signature too. Now, the biggest decoration for this junk journal is the cover that has some interactive parts with flips and pockets and that kind of stuff. So I'm using my lace love papers that are pretty neutral and they have laces and some designs that we're gonna see but we won't see it that much at the end the size doesn't really matter you just want to have some room to see the the square of the junk journal at the back so you see it's not the same size as the junk journal to allow me some space to add more layers I glued the two papers together just in the middle so it holds well when I'm doing the sewing with the sewing machine but before I wanted to do my folds so I can kind of follow the folds with the sewing machine as well you're gonna see when it's done so I'm just creating random folds actually it's it doesn't really matter how it ends you want one that is longer than the other one and you want some folds so you see with the the tread of the sewing machine i followed the lines and the folds and now i'm going to add this paper it's a coffee stain paper that was so dark that i never used it so far but i find that in this creation it works so well with the contrast and there's modeling paste on it so i just love it but honestly that paper i did the modeling paste on it more than two years ago and it's in my drawer and every time that i want to use papers with um, modeling paste on it it's always too dark so this time it works i'm gonna fold it at the back so i can um, glue it to the junk journal because I want this part at the top that is all folded to be just glued on the top not 
going to the back of the junk journal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to this modeling paste paper, the coffee stain paper with the sewing machine. And I'm going to only need to glue the coffee stain paper with the modeling paste on the, junk, the square junk journal through that portion here. This will allow me to flip everything and open everything and everything holds well together, as you can see. And I remove the junk journal because I want to work and add more and maybe glue or add more sewing. And at the end, when I'm done, I'm going to glue the coffee stain paper with the modeling paste to the junk journal and that would be the end. So I'm going to start using the ephemeras of my blessed talent digital kit they are so cute and that girl here this is my favorite i don't know it's probably because she is in pink and soft green but and she has flowers i'm just in love that ephemera piece is is really cute by itself it had um like a frame kind of but I needed to I needed it to be smaller than that. So when you look at the a printed paper, you can always reduce the size, trim it a little bit or tear a little bit more to make it to the size that you want. So we we tend to forget I am the worst in that. Sometimes I just look at my design papers and I use them as they are but we can we can change the size like for this one I just used the corner it's meant to be like a folded paper you folded it into two and then you get two pages for a full size nine by six junk journal but this time I just used the corner of it and I stitched on it before gluing it down so it mimics the frame of the cover that has been sewn and it created a pocket. So now it's about time that I glue it down all together. I'm gonna glue those flaps to create pockets and I tend to just glue one side of the, of the two so it's kind of a semi-open pocket. If I want to include something, sometimes it's easier to put it back. And later on, if I need to glue down the other side, I can do it, but I won't be able to unglue it. So I tend to just glue one side. Same for that little boy. I remove kind of the frame and just teared all the sides. And I'm gluing just two sides which converts that little piece of paper into an easy pocket. Now I'm gonna create another pocket with this gorgeous uh, embossed paper. And I do have a little stack of embossed paper in my Etsy shop. Not the one for the digitals, the one that is called Udulsina Journals for everything that needs shipping. So I have two shops, right? One only for digital that you print by yourself and over and over as you wish. And the other one, uh, which is Udulsina Journals, is for everything that needs shipping. My fabric, fancy yarns, printed for you paper packs for those of you who doesn't have any printer. I have some embossed uh, paper pack, uh, charms, every kind of stuff there so if you are a beginner and you don't have a lot of supplies you can buy packs of different different things there like for embossing papers you need the the big machine and then you need those embossing folders so the equipment is quite something to start with but with time you might invest into that but if you don't want to invest in the whole deal you can just buy a stack of paper already embossed for you coffee stained and embossed for you i do have a lot of polaroid type uh, photos in my different digital kits 
but I find it's it's kind of the best way for me to give you kind of pictures. So if you don't like the Polaroid frame, you can just trim it away. But otherwise, you kind of have those old type of pictures that you can add in ephemeras, as ephemeras in your pockets and everywhere in your creations. So, of course, in the Blessed Talent Kit, you have some Polaroid type of pictures there. And as you can see, it's an easy way to fill a pocket and it looks great right away. And of course, you're going to see later in the video that you can decorate them as well a little bit with fabric and laces and any other type of decorations. So for this fold, I wanted to make it a little bit more um, robust and I wanted to kind of hide the sewing line a little bit because it's the revert part of the paper and my sewing machine never really have the perfect tension for the tread. So I guess it's because it's an old machine, but anyway. And I tend to hide a little bit the sewing line that is at the back of the paper. So I've used the sari silk to hide it. And now I'm going to use this Crafty Me Shop lace to kind of decorate the cover and create a fold around the spine, I should say. This will make the spine more uh, sturdy. And it's kind of a decoration that follows the whole cover from the back, from the front to the back. So I love how it looks at the end. And when I glue any lace like that to my paper, my favorite glue is always the art glitter glue because it's a little bit cheaper. Well, not a little bit, a lot cheaper than Fabri-Tac. But the Fabri-Tac glue or the 3-in-1 would be as good. It's just a little bit more expensive. The art glitter glue is really a strong glue. And the advantage of it that I find is that you can really put a tiny piece of glue. Because you can buy the precision tip in uh, metal that you can put on your bottle. And that helps a lot. I will put a link in the description below for the precision tip that I'm talking about, which is the metal tip that you see there on my bottle. And this allows you to, to just put a tiny line of glue, which is quite enough. And you have less leaking of glue to your paper and around, it's less messy. Plus you save a lot of glue at the same time. And now I just created the most cutest pocket out of that Crafty Me Shop lace. And the way I'm going to glue it, because there's a lot of mesh there, I'll just put the glue on the flowers where there's more density so the glue won't pass through. And even if there's some gaps where there's no glue, nothing will fall from that pocket because I won't put any tiny pieces there. The pocket is too deep anyway for that. You need to put like bigger pieces of paper anyway in that kind of pocket. But isn't it great? I tend to forget to do like lace pockets like that, but they are the cutest, that's for sure. For this lace pocket, I've used the Fabri-Tac glue. Just in case it leaks, I can rub it off and it, it, it's more invisible than the art glitter glue if you mess up, I find. This is a Crafty Me Shop applique and I'll just glue it down there to kind of finish the cover. It just fell down there and it was already great so that was an easy peasy way to to decorate my cover 
and uh, it, it's always a thing, right? Figuring out which lace we're going to use. Because you can imagine that with the big stash that I have, it's an easy thing, but I guess maybe I have too much. <laughs> and sometimes it takes me minutes to find the appropriate lace that has the good color, size, and... and uh, style yeah i love to put the polka dot tool into uh my decorations it kind of creates more deepness to the whole thing so the flower sits on a bunch of uh polka dot tool that has been folded in any direction and it just sits there and it creates some dimension so the cheesecloth makes the same effect i know i repeat this over and over but there's always new people in my on my channel and they might not know that so i repeat over and over few details like that so I just add another of the gorgeous Crafty Me Shop lace applique there. I've trimmed it to fit the size of the paper and I use my art glitter glue just section by section because I don't want to put glue everywhere. As you can see, the lace is not on the paper everywhere. It's a little bit on the side hanging like uh, to be bigger than this then the paper now it's my fancy yarns that i use to create a little bow uh, this one i believe is out of stock already but there's plenty of others and they would make the same effect just just go have a look at my odulcina journals shop and there's a bunch of bundles there and I would be curious to know if I should list those uh, fancy yarns by unit like I've created bundles of six six uh, little wood pegs um, just because for the shipping you would pay the sh same shipping cost for one to six right so I created bundles of six but maybe I should allow you to pick your own. Or if you order more, you can just pick one or two. I wonder if there's any interest. Let me know in the comments. For sure, it's always a challenge for me to calculate the shipping because I need to put the shipping uh, size and weight for every item in case they are ordered solely like if you order just that item which will be the shipping cost for that but then when you add those to multiple other items in your order etsy always overcharge so but don't don't worry i always refound the overcharge shipping fees and i always maximize your shipping cost to be as less as possible but anyway some some of you might not know and might be afraid of the shipping costs sometimes anyway you can always contact me as well now i'm just adding some uh folded music sheets to create some ruffles and some sari silk ruffles to few pages there you go by either three page or five page or seven pages that will have those ruffles. And I love pages with ruffles. It creates a really a good looking and style when you look at the journal from the side. And even from the cover, you see there's, a, there's details through the pages. And for me, in my style, I cannot glue them straight, right? They need to be a ruffle, and the ruffle needs to be really messy. They cannot be straight. It's like, 
it, it needs some folds that are a little bit more to the left, more to the right, and in angles. And so you go with a spatula like that and you create folds. And if you use the hot glue like I'm doing, just do little portions by portion because the glue will harden too quickly otherwise. And you'll you'll have a hard time and you'll have big, uh, big bumps of glue on your paper. Of course, you cannot really avoid the bumps of glue. But for sari silk and chiffon silk, I find that the hot glue is almost, is the only one I know actually that won't leak through and that you really don't see the, the glue through the fabric, through the sari silk. Sewing is my other preferred option for, for that. Otherwise, you kind of see the glue, where you've put some glue, and I just don't love the look. Creating a corner pocket there, it's just folding a paper into two, making sure it is square, and uh, you glue just two corner, and you can even have the little flap to open and add some details or journaling there. This was a snippet that I've created it in the past. It was in my stash, so I just glued, glued it down there. And now I'm using my vintage simple cards. And instead of putting like swatches of laces or fabric there, I've used it as a page decoration. And I used a paper clip to clip it to a page and added the card in it like just like a tuck spot. So that was just another way to use it. Now I wanted, I love to use those little labels that are folded into two and you, they are a great decoration. So when you're done with your, or, or almost done, this is where you can come back to your cover or your pages and add a few of those. I have a couple of kits that contains those kind of labels um, and uh, they are really a great addition. You're going to see how much details it, it's adding. I could not put that labels without gluing the top of that pocket. So now it was time to glue it. Otherwise the place of it was not good or I was hiding the numbers at the back and I wanted to see the whole label so you see it's gonna look nice now that I glued everything down this is what I love about those labels is that it creates a little tab and they are decorated on both sides and it's just the little details that we miss so same for little labels of words or numbers it's now time to look back at the whole project and add more of those little details where there's a little spot you could glue it down. And for this little word, I glued it down just like that. You need, um, you need to turn it a little bit to read, but it puts a little detail there that is quite nothing, but it's just one more details and we, we love that. Well, I say we because the majority of us loves that. So now same for the Polaroid type of pictures. I'm going to use a little bit of fabric or laces, cheesecloth and a word label there and I'll just glue it. So these little words are coming from the dressing room kit and this is really tiny but on the page you have like the words in a tiny uh, size in a, a small size medium size large size for any of your needs another ephemera that we can add to the junk journal is a matchbook it's really easy to do with any kind of paper, but in my dressing room, uh, no, in my reading passion kit, you have a page of ephemera that contains three matchbooks, and it all 
also contains the line where you need to fold. And my idea of creating those was to give, um, you know, if you take a stripe of paper and you fold it, there's one side that, well, if it's just flowers, it doesn't care, but it would be the reverse, right? The pattern would be upside down. So which those match book, I've been able to put like a little rabbit on both sides and the rabbits are not upside down. So you just take a bunch of scrap pieces of papers and you trim to side, to size. It's the same style than a scrappy pad, but it's within a folded cover, so we call them a matchbook. And it's so cute. It fills a pocket quickly. It's a cute decoration ephemera. It's a, it's a good way to use your scrap pieces of papers as well. So I love to create those. The tricky part is to staple them down and because you need to staple them to grab all the papers but you need to leave some papers so you can fold the top and it has enough space to hold there. So you see you have the rabbits on both sides and nothing is upside down. And it's perfect to fill a pocket I just decided to fill this corner pocket there with one of the cards from the kit initially. Now I'm gonna use those uh, swatches sample top. They have many usage, but one of them would be to just use them um, at the top of a page to create a talk spot. So you're gonna see how easy it is to do. And because there was some space left on the pages, I've give you some um, scripting that you can tear all the sides and use as a little decoration. I don't like to leave some white gaps in my digital kits. So this is where you might think why she put that there but it was just to fill the the white space so you don't you don't waste any paper so you can see you can fold into two and you ink them and then the only thing you need to do now is to glue down the top and you're gonna have a top spot on both sides just make sure you don't glue it down all the way because then you're going to have just a top that is a decoration, which would be great too. But in this case, I wanted to create like a talk spot. Here you go, as you can see. And that little script, ephemera, I just glued it on top of it. I could add a little piece of lace too. I didn't think about it. Well, that, that journal might not be done completely by the end of this video. Uh, but uh, I wanted to give you a lot of ideas on how to decorate your journal. And I've been using a lot of different kits, not because I wanted necessarily to, to show you different kits, but it's because these were already printed in my stash. And I just looked at the pile of papers I had printed already and I use them. They kind of all match, right? My style is all, um, how can I say that? They, they match, they all match together pretty much. So it's always like um, soft colors and uh, you can miss, mix the digital kits together. As you can see, because this is exactly what I'm doing today, I'm mixing a bunch of different kits together. These letter journaling papers, they were too big, so I just trimmed them down a little bit. So now they fit in the pocket. 
and I'm gonna use another ephemera page that I'll just fold I'm gonna ink and put into that lace pocket and these are just cards that we can put some journaling at the back and they're a great decoration and again that's another kit and it matches perfectly I guess my my style is predictable and it all matches together eventually with time I guess I'm gonna go with other styles or colors but I'm not there yet <laughs> so this piece of lace of the kind of applique was the leftover from the cover and I'll just reuse it to decorate one of those Polaroid type of pictures and put it in the top spot of the top cover that I've glued down there. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.